Last week, UK unemployment fell by 75,000, which means that the rate of unemployment went down from 4.4% to 4.3%, which is the lowest rate of unemployment in Britain since 1975. What's more, wages on a year-to-year -year basis went up by 2.1%. Now, I can hear you say, Aaron, this sounds like good news. You sound like a Tory party press officer. Why are you bigging up this data? Well, I'm not, because that has to be seen in the context of another figure. Inflation, in fact, the lowest rate of inflation, if you're being generous, was 2.9% on a year to year basis, which means that real wages, wages when they're purchasing things, which is of course what wages are for, are actually going down. But that's not just a phenomenon for the last year, that's a phenomenon for the last decade. Between 2007 and 2015, real wages went down by 10.4%, in Britain. That was worse than any other European country, except for Greece. Our media tells us that the likes of France and Italy are economic basket cases, and yet even in these countries, real wages went up, not down, by 10.4%. And the data from last week shows that that has no end in sight, that we're still seeing real wages falling. My wager is that between 2007 and 2020, we'll see real wages fall by about 15%. That's not been seen since the 80s. No, not the 1980s. The 1780s. Which explains why in-work poverty is rampant. Typically, the experience of being poor, being relatively poor, being in a household with 60% or less of the average wage, which is around £26,000 a year, typically that was characterised by being a pensioner, or unemployed, or on disability benefit. But in the last couple of years, it's become increasingly attached to an experience of being in work and still not quite making ends meet. This is accelerating, actually, almost on a monthly basis. And now, more than 60% of households in poverty have somebody working. Once you look at the data in regard to falling real pay, you understand precisely why. And while the Conservatives like to point to data around unemployment, just like the data we saw last week, it's meaningless. I mean, after all, you could eliminate unemployment altogether. But if finding a job, if getting work, isn't a path out of poverty, then what's the point? And then there's productivity. Productivity is how much output is created per hour work. Britain, in this respect, is doing even worse than it is on wages. At least there, we're the same as Greece. But when it comes to productivity, we're again seeing something without any real precedent, both globally and historically. For every hour worked in 2017 in Britain, less is being produced than 10 years ago in 2007. If you told even the biggest critic of capitalism that 10 years ago, they would have laughed in your face. They would have said, it's impossible, it's never happened before. And yet, it's happened. And that failure around productivity, the fact that an hour's work in Britain today creates less value than it did 10 years ago, underpins a failure in regard to economic growth. Again, just like with unemployment, the government would want to point to GDP and say, the economy has grown. What's GDP? GDP is all the goods and services in circulation being purchased over the course of a year. And they'll say that GDP has grown. Well, yes, GDP has grown, but that's because more people are working and they're working longer hours. When you measure GDP on a per hour worked basis, which brings in productivity, well, it's gone down. And when you measure it on a per person basis, and after all, that makes more sense, because if you double the population, that doesn't mean you've doubled the size of the economy. It does in absolute terms, but that's nothing to be proud of. When you measure on a per person basis, we saw no growth between 2007 and 2015. In fact, it went down on a per capita basis. It's gone slightly back up again, but it's negligible. We're, we're talking a couple of percent. So on GDP, there's also a significant failure. Wages down, productivity down, GDP flat. But what about the deficit? After all, that's the thing the Tories asked to be measured by. That was the reason, the entire motivation behind austerity and behind the Cameron Osborne government from 2010 to 2016. They said we have to deal with the deficit. Well, when they came to power, yes, the deficit was high. Britain was spending, in terms of its public expenditure, was spending around £130 billion more than it was bringing in through general taxation generally. But what's the figure today? It's still in the tens of billions. It's around £60 billion a year. So all that suffering, all those layoffs, all those cuts, uh, increases in tuition fees, uh, people who are disabled suffering, work capability assessments, all of these things were for nothing because the deficit still is very high. Now we can have a conversation about deficits. Some people say it doesn't really matter if you have a deficit because 
Governments and nation states print their own money. I'm inclined to agree with that. But let's play the Tory game for just one second. They said, don't judge us by wages if we don't do the job. And they certainly haven't. Don't judge us by GDP per head. And they've definitely not performed well there either. Certainly don't judge us by productivity. It's the worst in the Western world. Judge us by the deficit. Even there, it's a failure. On wages, productivity, GDP and the deficit, it's failure, failure, failure and more failure. The truth is, the British economy is a basket case. And of course, our rigged media and our rigged political system, and most certainly our rigged government, would want to tell us otherwise. They'd want to say, look, France and Greece and Spain and Italy, they're terrible. We're doing so well. Well, actually, on a few pretty important measures, we're most certainly not. Don't believe those in the media or the government that tell you otherwise. With figures like unemployment, the data we saw last week, there's a masking going on. There's a veiling of the truth. This is an economic model which doesn't work for most people. Yes, unemployment's going down, but those jobs are low skills, low pay, low productivity. They don't work. It's a broken model. But the Tories don't mind because it's a model that means they get richer. It's a model which means a tiny elite sucks the wealth from the rest of us. And it's time we did something about it. The people behind our rigged media and our rigged politics want to persuade you, they want to convince you that the economy is of utter irrelevance, that it's some object out there, that it's like a mushroom in a dark field which is either growing or dying. That couldn't be further from the truth. The economy is of utter centrality to every single aspect of your life and how happy you are. The economy determines whether your wages go up or down, whether you can afford to go for a meal with your friends. The economy determines whether you can have children or not or care for your ageing parents. It defines whether your sense of opportunity and possibility is expanding or contracting. Fundamentally, it shapes how happy you are. Life should be about happiness. It should be about fun and about joy. We only get one and we're wasting it if we continue with a system which is wasting us. We've lost one decade. For goodness sake, we can't lose another.